Hello everyone, uh, today we are going to be going over Dark Worlds from 2012 format. And this is the format with wind-ups, the shot clock format, um, most people remember it of, but uh, other decks are Dino Rabbit was uh, still a thing, and you had Insectors hanging in there. And uh, there was a couple others, but particularly uh, I used Dark Worlds as my go-to deck. Oh yeah, as well as, I'm pretty sure Marmels was a thing as well, that just came out. So, those were the decks at the time, and this is uh, the deck list I use. So I'm going to go into the deck list and then I'm uh, showing you some example games of how this deck works and pretty much how it functions. Uh, so we're just going to get right into um, the deck profile here. Starting off, I ran two Beige at the time. Beige was just really good because it's a pretty, it's pretty much just a floater. And uh, the reason I went with two is because uh, it allowed you to go with uh, rank four plays with Trance at times. And I do run uh, quite a few rank fours, but Beige was just a really solid floater. You can normal summon it, so that was a big deal to me. Uh, I also do run one Silva. Uh, Silva was good for the, the virus cards, but he was slightly bigger. So if you can't get the grapher for whatever reason, you have Silva, uh, but Beige was uh, the primary floater. And uh, then we went with uh, three Brow, which is pretty standard, unless you draw a card. Uh, three Graffa, uh, the boss monster of this deck, and uh, pretty good because he also floats. So if you get Beige and Graffa going, uh, you do a lot of damage. Silva, already kind of explained him, he's just a uh, a pseudo Graffa and also a floater, similar to Beige. Three Snow, the best uh, best monster in the deck probably. This allows you to search everything. Uh, if you have multiple draw cards, like if you have a gate, a drag down, a dealings or something like that, you can just keep on cycling through snows, snow search snow, uh, until you get into something else. And then we ran two tour guides. Um, Toria was at three at this time. Uh, the reason we went with two is because I, I ran a trans archfiend instead of a third tour guide. Tour guide is pretty good when you don't really have too much going for you. So if you don't have too much going for you, you can kind of stall out the Zen mains. Uh, this allow you to draw into some cards, buy you some time. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you pretty much go for Levier if you have gates. And uh, if you need to get gates going, you have uh, Leviathan Dragon. Just a ditch of material in the grave. Uh, and you can also use Brow for that. Don't use Sangin. Uh, Sangin is pretty worthless to me because he has to die. And then, so you, you usually you're not just going to leave a Sangin sit on the field. You're going to do Tour Guide to get Brow to bounce back with Graffa, or you're going to go into Levier most times. Uh, but Tour Guide is, um, outside of getting the Levier, there's not too many power plays with him. And Trance is kind of just a better floater. Uh, he's kind of hard to deal with at times. Uh, one, he could, he's not like a spell card that you have to discard with, so for instance, if you're playing against wind-ups and they shot clock you and they call spells, you have Trans Archfiend to get your engine going in a way. I mean, obviously that's going to really hurt because you're still called spells, but you can discard a Graffa or, or whatever just to help out a little bit. Uh, that's not the primary reason because that's not, that's not a really good function of the card, but uh, if Trans is destroyed, you get the recycle uh, a dark banished monster from you and add it to your hand so that's really good and this time is really hard to deal with so i like trance and two tour guides you could just drop trance for another tour guide if you really want to but i like this ratio it is uh a lot to be flexible because it does give you the option to go for a rank four play with beige and you do run uh some pretty good uh rank fours at the time honestly not like the the stellar rank fours weren't out yet. Like uh, you couldn't use uh, Lavalvo Chain or Emerald yet at this time. Saiton Knight, those weren't out yet. Uh, they come out uh, within the year. But uh, yeah, that's a wrap up for the monsters. I feel like 15 monsters was a really solid lineup because uh, you saw them at the right times. It's not like you just drew like all discard spells and all that. And also talk about cards that weren't really uh, needed at the time as well. So I ran that one Allure. Allure was that one. Uh, it's at three right now, but one was just good just to dig. 
Card Destruction, this was the best, probably the best card in the deck. Discard all cards and uh, <laughs> both players draw the same amount back. And you'll see in the replays this card is absolutely brutal. Because you can have two to three Dark Woods in your hand and just get like a plus, a couple pluses out of it. And then it also gets your engine going. It's, just, it's a really crazy card at the time. It I think it got banned at the end of the Dragon Ruler format. If I'm not mistaken, but yeah, this is a really insane card. Uh, then we go with three dealings, really good just to get your engine going. Drag down, uh, works with your engine, triggers all the dark worlds, and also lets you see your hand. So you get a lot of information from your opponent and see what they can do. You take their best card out of the hand that they have, and then you're also going with your engine. So inherently, these are all innate ones like dealings and drag down, uh, card destruction, but since you run all these dark worlds to get their effects, um, those nags actually turn into dub. I mean, it could be pluses, but it's just neutral. But it also gets your engine going, so it's really good. Uh, Foolish just to get Graph Engrave. Uh, you need something else to get him in there, rather than just drawing and discarding him, so that's just another outlet. Heavy Storm, pretty broken card, just sweep up fields. Um, and I'll also talk about the trap lineup with that as well. But Heavy Storm is pretty good. Monster Reborn. Uh, if you have a Dark Roll and Grave, like a Brow or s Snow, you can just Monster Reborn them and then bounce them back with Grapha, so... Monster Reborn was just kind of like a plus one in this deck, which is kind of funny. Uh, Gates, pretty good card. Uh, makes Grapha 3000, and it's just... You don't have to continuously have a discard card because you can get Gates. Uh, three Upstart Goblins, you want 37 cards in this deck. Uh, more draw power just to thin get the, your power cards like card destruction and all that so you just want to get your best cards as soon as possible it's kind of funny because i ran this upstart with i ran upstart in this deck before upstart was really popular with uh, patrick hoven and stuff not not saying i'm taking credit or anything because it was pretty common to use it in a dark world deck but a lot of decks just ran 40 cards and now upstarts because they were a bit more it was like a, a upstart era and reckless greed also but that's a totally different thing. Alright, so that's all the spell cards. We did run 17, so it's quite heavy. Um, but you kind of need all those spells, and they all have pretty good reason. Uh, onto the traps, we ran 8, and these are all very good traps. Um, here's the virus cards, Deck Devastation and Eradicator. Uh, pretty much your game enters. Uh, once you get your engine going, these just destroy decks. Uh, Windows was the most popular deck, so Deck Devastation Virus just completely ended them. Uh, against everything else, Virus or Eradicator was just it was uh, pretty deadly as well. And once again, if you can't get to the Graphas, these are pretty dead. So Silva is a good alternative because you don't need another. You can just discard Silva, and he can just be live right away if you have uh, if you have Gates with the Eradicator as well. So if you go Gates, discard Silva, you get him on field. Uh, and then you don't have to rely on having a Grapha Engrave. So that was uh, really good for the, these two virus cards. Uh, one on one, just because you don't want to open with two deck dev or two eradicators. Like, uh, it's good to just be flexible, and I, I can also side more as well. But deck dev just completely destroys lineups and sectors and all that. And you get to see your opponent's hand, what they draw for the next three turns. So these cards are just absurdly strong. And they are. Uh, uh, Common cards back then the you that were used were like Deep Prison, Violence Trap Hole, just they get stuff off the field. So you can just chain these, put the Grapha back in the grave, and then it just comes a big nig for the opponent. Through Reckless Greed, uh, if you couldn't tell, this is a pretty turbo deck. You have a lot of cards that allow you to draw. You have three, you have three Brow that lets you draw. You have Card Destruction, three Dealings. So yeah, this is a pretty just a turbo deck. And if you're able to stack two Reckless Greeds, um, more than times you're able to because you're thinning your deck so much, you're able to dig a lot. And then, um, so even if you just trigger one Reckless Greed, uh, hoping you get lucky, you can draw into more draw cards to get into more Reckless Greeds later on. So, uh, this, work, this card works uh, way better than other decks. Like if you were just to slap Reckless Greed in those, probably won't work as well because this is a super turbo deck so you're going to be able to dig for more reckless greeds and uh, get more pluses that way 
So yeah, this card was absolutely great at the time. Uh, Solemn Judgment, this was that one. It's recently on, on the last ban list. It came to three in the TCG. But yeah, this is a card that said no. Uh, you can tell by the picture. It's uh, pretty flexible. And uh, you didn't really care about having your life points because uh, if you're going to have a 3,000 beater on your field, it's going to be kind of hard to get over that. Starlight Road. I like Road. Uh, I think I was considering uh, cutting it at one point, but if you have if you have to worry about board weights like Heavy Storm and Torrential and that, uh, you just want to have that security best at times. And you'll see in the replays where Road actually came in clutch quite a few times. Like, I wasn't worried because I had Starlight Road. And uh, the last card in the deck is Torrential Tribute. This lets you, uh, and you don't really care about killing your graph is off because you can just re recur them. And then, so if your opponents make a big four to go over graph, you can just torrential and then they lose big. So yeah, that's the 40 card uh, round up here. Uh, really happy with the main deck. It, it just worked so fluently and it was uh, really good. Uh, I'm gonna go over the side deck. Some of the cards weren't there, I'm pretty sure, but I can't, there was like two cards I can't remember. I'm just going to go over the side deck real quick. So, uh, side dark hole here, if we're going second, against any just like, hard to deal with uh, boards, like Diamond Rabbit just bait out something, or uh, wind up just clear board. Uh, three MSCs, every deck pretty much side like Shadow Mirrors or Macrocosmos, D Fissures, all just like the graveyard hate, so I sided three MST and two Dust Tornado. These uh, pretty much de dealt with all those cards pretty well because I have so much draw power again. You're able to find these cards uh, quicker than later. So these were just great, the ratio there. And I just remember like at the time when I went to tournaments and stuff, I like, always had like that out for like someone's like Shadow Mirror was great. People just get so mad at this deck at times. Uh, Dark Smog, I don't think I sided it too much against. I think I sided like against a mirror or something like Insectors because they're a bit more grave reliant at the time and uh, I wasn't really good against windups or stuff like that so it's just uh, another discard alternative uh, if you banish like a Grapha or like a an, an Insector monster uh, whatever it's kind of just like a DD Crow of the deck uh, didn't, I don't think I use it too often but it was just like a filler uh, deck dev, I uh, I don't remember if I side deck deck dev and the virus cards. I don't remember if I side more. I'm pretty sure I side a second deck devastation virus for like windups if I go first again. That's the this had a right, insane windup matchup if they didn't go like uh, shark magician all the time. Uh, but yeah, yeah, these uh, virus cards are just kind of fillers. I don't remember if I didn't have this like two spots there. I don't remember what they were. Uh, three warlords. This card was absolutely insane against like uh like windups or dino rabbit this absolutely stopped our engine great going second card uh so if you're going against windups and they shock lock you you can just have this set it stand my phase activate this clears their whole board and they have pretty much nothing left so it's only going to be a matter of time before you're going to be able to play Yu-Gi-Oh -Oh if they do open combo if not it's good the whole rest of the match anyway, so this card was absolutely insane. Just love the card. And it's, it's funny because it's, so, it's still relevant to the, in today's meta. And uh, so one skill drain, I don't remember if I sided the one skill drain. Uh, I don't think it was really absolutely great against everything because people would probably have outs. Um, so I don't remember what I did with that. But I I might have decided three skill drains. I don't remember. I just didn't really like this card compared to like the viruses because they're not like complete blowouts. Uh, it stops your tour guides and it kind of like interferes at like awkward times. So its skill drain was good, but it wasn't like the best thing ever. Uh, getting into the extra deck, we had the Stardust Dragon for the Starlight Road, uh, Dweller, good for like grave reliant decks such as like a mirror match or something like that. Uh, Cowboy for game, Heliopolis. Uh, good with if you get like a bunch of graphics on field, you just need to clear something off, like a back rower maybe. Uh, and then two levieres, uh, just one of the second one just in case because it's that good of a card and this allows you to recur. Kind of like I was talking with Trans Archfiend, just return banish stuff to your hand. That's pretty good. Uh, My stroke, this card was kind of cool because it kind of it worked with the deck devastation virus. So if you have gates in this, uh, you can 
potentially use that if you really needed to. More times than not, you wouldn't because the Trans Archfiend just turns into a big guy if you discard a card. He comes to 23, so you can just deck dub that. But my stroke, uh, just all all together, pretty good card. Uh, Musa Rhythm didn't really use him a whole lot, but he becomes uh, really big. Uh, because he, he's 15 and then he gains double attack and then he has 300 more so I think he can become uh, 3600 attack so you didn't really have to beat over thing too massive because you do have Grappus to take care of that but if you're in a sticky with position to go or something odd then he can do it uh, Leviathan uh, Dragon is good for detaching Acid Golem again just kind of like another big beater didn't really make him too often uh, Black Ship of Corn. Pretty sure this card just came out at the time. Uh, this was the, the Zen Main's killer because it sent the card to the grave instead of uh, destroying. So, yeah, this was a pretty insane card at the time. Uh, Roach. Again, a fiend monster. I don't know why there's so many fiends in the extra deck, but I mean, it was convenient for me. So, uh, this was good against something like Chaos Dragons. I don't. I don't think that was a deck at the time because Future Fusion got banned the format before, I'm pretty sure. But. Yeah, if you just come into some big monster deck, you can make this. Didn't really make it that much. Then Tempo, didn't make it a whole lot. And Zen means, of course, uh, pretty good card. So yeah, extra deck, not too important. Just Levier and Zen means and Leviathan Dragon. Those are pretty much the only useful ones. Uh, so yeah, that's the deck list. Uh, yeah, I was really happy with it. I had like a, some insane winning record at the time with this deck, and it was just so good through that whole... Uh, shock lap format and I was really happy with it uh, so we're gonna go into some practice duels and to see how this deck performed so I'm playing against my friend Kyle here in this match we uh, I was actually going first this time and I had this set up so we can see both each other's hands he's using wind ups I'm using the dark world deck of course uh, so we're just gonna fast forward here I foolish burial the Grapha and uh, I don't think I should have done this. I had uh, the drag down to the grave uh, here, so I only have one card with this card with card destruction. So I probably should have set the card destruction and just drag down the beige because I would have probably gotten more bang for my buck there. Uh, and I do have reckless greed, so if I set this holding up the reckless greed, I could have four or five cards my next turn around and then activate card destruction. So I should have just just did a uh, drag down on beige and it's. Uh, did that way instead of using the card destruction, but I think it was a, <laughs> this is the first game in a while I played with this deck, so I just went with that. And it's also, um, I, mean, I knew he was playing Winus, but if you're, well, I had the drag now, but I was gonna say, like, if you're eager to see what your opponent's drawing, then or playing, then you could do that as well. I do happen to draw into Reckless Greed again, so I'm gonna have two Reckless Greeds here. So if I just held onto that card destruction a bit longer, then it would have been a bit crazy. And then I wouldn't have had to waste the drag down there because I want to see what his best card in his hand is again. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, that probably wasn't the best play. I would just want to drag down and then went from there. And I picked apart wherever it was in this hand because his uh, current hand is much better than uh, his last one, I could say. Uh, anyways, well, I got the setup here. We got Graph and Beige. Kind of went all in, but it's a kind of okay because I have two Reckless Greed, so I can draw up the five cards. I mean, I'm going to have a whole hand to play with my next turn. And I have the, the Virus Eradicator here, so I'm going to just eradicate it with Graffa. I have Starlight Road for anything else. I'm pretty sure I just hit spells with Eradicator here on Stamina Phase. Yep. Uh, <laughs> he just uh, scooped it up there. He didn't really have anything else to play with, so. Uh, he's going first this time. He has a pretty decent setup. He has Torrential Tribute and Rabbit with the the factory. So I don't, I'm pretty sure he went with. Oh no, you did. We'll go with the Rabbit. Okay, so yeah, that was a good play. Uh, I probably would go on. Well, I guess Torrential Tribute was a decent play to keep in hand, just because uh, I do have a heavy storm. So he set the bottomless. Alrighty, so let's see what my hand has in store. I went Upstar, got the Trance. I'm gonna upstart again. So this is my current hand here. We have a uh, tour guide play. So I'm probably going to summon tour guide. Yep. And then I uh, try to get my engine going. I, I figured he might have had something like a bottom set. And this is a uh, perfect bait for that because I don't, I really don't care for Leviathan Dragon. 
Uh, honestly, you should have probably just not bottomless this and just held onto the bottomless. And uh, I think I'll probably discard the brow or something like that here. Or I think I might discard silver. No, okay, so <laughs> again, I drew into uh, card destruction thanks to brow giving me the extra card. And uh, I think I just card destruction to get silver on the field just so I don't die next turn. Right off the bat. And uh, I think that was a decent play because I don't think I. Again, card destruction could have been nuts again if I had just wait for the reckless, but I think it was uh, okay here. So I'm going to get Silva back on the field and just um, attack uh, directly because he's going to banish the rabbit. Uh, he has shark now and he's going to get magician. So he's going to have a bit of a crazy field next turn. I don't really have anything to stop. I only have reckless and starlight road. So is this going to be free rain from there? Uh, magician shark combo. Uh, he, he used to play Winus back in the day. We haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh very much, uh, especially old formats. So he, I'm not sure if I, yeah, I can't look at his extra deck, so I can't see what he had and everything. But, uh, for some reason, he felt like he couldn't kill me. Uh, he might have been able to, I'm not sure. I guess he could have put the Zen Mighty in attack mode and get a bit more damage in, but that still wasn't enough to get me killed. So uh, he uh, he kept the upstart goblin. I think he I would he would have been better off drawing that drawing the extra card. Uh, but I guess he was just more concerned about the damage. He has this whole field, so I would just uh, use upstart goblin because he still wasn't able to kill me. I drew a torrential for turn, and I drew the graph. So we're gonna get our engine going here. Uh, I'm not sure if I was debating if I was able to kill him this turn. I was able to, what was this, that D prison? Yeah, I was able to grab the D prison, so. And we're just gonna go from here, draw a bunch of cards. Uh, we're gonna levy air, I think I have, a, yeah, I have another graphic, so we have two graphics here to play with, and I have Monster Reborn. So we're gonna like just flood the field here, and uh, eradicate for uh, extra there. Uh, I did transfer to pop the, the factory, so you couldn't get uh, effects with the Zen mains, because uh, just that, Constant pluses. This is gonna get in the way. Honestly, I should have just grappled one of his uh, guys, maybe. I think I just le left the Zamians here. So, oh, exactly. Yeah, I just left the Zamians and just burn out the Maestro. And then I said, okay, so we're gonna see what I have. He gets right back. He has Dark Hole and Upstart Gummin. So he's been in a pickle now. And I have Torrential Starlight Road virus so I'm pretty sure I just use virus here on standby phase and then uh or he just he might just yeah he just went dark hole I went Starly Road so that's gonna be game he only has uh Zen Mains to play with he has MST but that's not gonna do anything for him and I have another reckless greed just give me a couple more cards so uh that was that match I'm not sure if this actually replaces Oh, he, he actually went first this time, so we did another rematch. Uh, so he's starting off this time because I went first last time to start the match off. So he went Tour Guide Sangan, and he has Solomon Warren Deeper. So it's a, a decent setup. Uh, again, not like first turn combo or anything like that. I'm going to go Gates, probably discard the Graph up, pop the back row, and. Uh, might have. Oh, no, I drew the snow. Okay, so that's going to be much better, actually. Uh, Gates gets the engine going, so this makes Tour Guide much better. In this instance, because I can do Levier. And I uh, get that graph alive here. So we're just going to beat over the again because we don't care. Get some damage in. And uh, that's all I can do. So he had, he drew Mirror Force. Uh, he does have the the Rabbit and Shark. And he has nothing in Gray. Well, he does have Rabbit. So uh, maybe it would have been better to do Rat. I'm not sure. Because he's a uh, he has he has some trap cards, but other than that, he doesn't really have a whole lot going for him. So maybe Rat would have been better here, just to get something going. Like it's uh, Zemmy's try to crash, uh, destroy something. Uh, so this is my hand now, and uh, we do uh, I think okay. We're just gonna let it play out. I just drag down, get some cards going here. 
And I, I'm gonna. This is a position where I'm not really worried about torrential tribute or mirror force, which he does have, because I have the Starlight Road. So if he has, if he has Starlight Road or if he has mirror force, solemn judgment, then I'm kind of messed up. But I'm just pushing for mass damage, and that's gonna be game for that one. Um, honestly, I think he would have been better off summoning the rat instead of the rabbit, and that because he really needs something to get going there. So starting off this time, he gets to go first. I think, yeah, we are side decking this time. In the last match, we did not side deck. So this one, we just wanted to see what the side decks would do. He actually didn't draw in us any side deck cards. I drew into the Warlords here. Uh, so yeah, he's just kind of set some stuff. Oh yeah, he uh, actually forgot to draw his extra card, so we, we just fixed that real quick. Uh, yeah, this is kind of a brick here. Uh, I don't really have anything going. Because I drew all monsters and warlords, but the thing is, warlords is going to kind of keep me in the game for a while. So I'm just going to poke over a brow. He's going to be able to get a search, and then I just went warlords, and I had the second one. He had the MST, but I had the second warlords to keep me in the game. The uh, thing is, uh, I still didn't get anything going here. I think. I don't think I have anything in the extra deck yet. But he, we actually weren't triggering factory for a couple turns, so we just like, I don't know, he couldn't do anything anyways, but I should have just like just left the rats on the field just so he couldn't pull us off anymore. So let's look at this game state here. Uh, we're just kind of going back and forth trying to draw something. I have the MST and the virus, but yeah, I don't have any discard cards right now. I could summon Brow, try to get an extra deck card, and try to get a a fiend in the grave for gate slide, but I figured I'd just keep it like this game state right now, just kind of like waiting for me to draw something rather than him. He has a lot of cards though. He has Shadowmere, Psalm, he, he has Fissure in hand. Uh, so he has way too many back rows because if he tries to go Fissure, uh, he should sit Solemn here. And then he has the Shadowmere, so I'm gonna see what happens. Yeah, so he sits Solemn. Can't really do anything because he doesn't have a. Uh, any beast, extra deck monsters, uh, soul server, uh, uh, the mountain guy, whatever the, the extra deck monster. Is. He's a beast, but he's not out yet. I drew into the card destruction here, so I'm probably just gonna like. I think I ditch my activate gates, ditch the rest of my hand. Yeah, he has uh, that. I MST the the shadow mirror, but he does activate the solemn judgment on the MST. So I'm not gonna. I'm actually gonna go neg one here. Uh, but I am able to summon Graphos because that is an inherent summon, not an effect to summon. So, bouncing back, I'm still able to get a big beater on the field. You know, let's see what he has. He has Solemn Warning and Deep Prison. So, he's going to discard his hand. Uh, he, had, he had a pretty stacked hand, to be honest. He had Fissure, Reborn, Dark Holy. I just didn't have anything for him to, like, He's under a warlord, so he can't really do anything. He actually doing into a pretty good hand again with uh, Heavy Storm and MST. Uh, so you can clear my back row. Uh, I actually have a, a couple graphos there. So I'm going to get double graph on the field. Can't activate any other monster's effects, though, because of the Shadow Mirror. Uh, I think he goes deep prison there. I'm just going to deck, uh, de uh, deck Devastation Virus him. And just clear all the monsters. So he's just gonna have like absolutely nothing going for him. I'm gonna have a graph that just beat him down. Yeah, solemn warning, but it's not gonna really help him here. And I think I, yeah, I just passed. And he didn't draw into another. Well, if you would have drawn into a monster, it would have been gone. He really needed the monster reborn here to get his uh, deck going. But again, uh, I do have the world's warlords, but he does have outs for that. So he just didn't draw into a monster, and it's just gonna be a game for that. So yeah, that was kind of like the highlights of the the Dark World deck. It is pretty insane once it gets going, and it can just completely. It's probably like the most like uh, opponent hate deck, just because it has so much disruption. As far as what your opponent's trying to do, you have the virus cards and the drag downs just to really mess up with your opponent's game plan is. And on top of that, you're just getting like free advantage constantly because all the draw power and stuff like that. So this deck is extremely deadly and you saw it on full display there against windups because windups was considered the best deck in the format but this inherently just had a good windup matchup as long as they didn't go like 
Shark Magician in like every single game. As long as they're not doing that, like going first every game, then you have a good chance. Uh, the thing is, uh, it's the side decks. Once you get in the side decks, he saw like the Shadow Mirrors, the D Fissure. They had a lot of hate, but you have to compensate that with the MSTs and Dust Tornadoes. So you put those in, they put those in, so it kind of evens out. And then uh, you usually just go back to a regular game state, how it was like maybe like games one or two. But if you're not able to clear those uh, floodgates, uh, the game could be a lot harder. Honestly, D Fisher hurts a lot more than something like Shadow Mirror, because under Shadow Mirror, you can still summon Grafos and keep your deck going to some degree. But with D Fisher's Macrocosmos, it's really hard to deal with that if you don't have those uh, back row removal.